Gentlemen, if you thought that the energy and the electricity couldn't get any higher here at Mansfield Tavern for XFC 62, it is with great pleasure that I can confirm that it will. Every fight remaining here tonight is for a championship. Are you ready for the first of those championship fights here tonight? It is for the XFC Amateur Flyweight Championship. Introducing first, Moses, the Killmonger, Dang. And now we start strap season. The boys wanting to make sure that they end the year with a nice bit of jewelry. That is the XFC Amateur Flyweight Belt. Walking out now, we have Moses the Killmonger Dang, 21 years of age, born in Judah, South Sudan, fighting out of the Wolves' den under Stephen Walton. He has a record of two wins and one loss. Absolute weapon of a striker. I'll throw to you, Adam. What have you got up for us? Hey, well, we know that he's a heavy, heavy striker. Heaps of kickboxing, heaps of uh, K1. So I reckon we're going to see a lot of stand-up and some solid techniques. Lots of kicks, I reckon. I know his camp was great. He just finished the fight from Eternal. So he's coming in already hot off the fight. So training never stop. It's good to go. Yeah, and what, what we're expecting here as well is he is a notable kickboxer. But he said he, he thinks his opponent's going to underestimate his grappling ability. So he knows enough about grappling to be able to remain striking. And, you know, think of your Israel Alessandro style being a ridiculously awesome kickboxer and knowing what it takes to keep yourself on your feet. That's what I'm looking for the keys to success for Moses today. Yeah, if you stay on his feet, you do a lot of damage. Introducing his opponents, Percy No Mercy Bombi. So Percival No Mercy Mwambi coming all the way from Nairobi, fighting out of MMA FFT. And we saw them at the last fight show, they come well prepared. Fighting under Ronaldo Sibiaco with a 3-1 record. A throw to yourself, Matt, what do you know about Percy? Yeah, so I know he's uh, he's been itching to fight. So he was supposed to fight uh, Mitch McLaren on the last go for this belt. And he was very, very dirty. I know that for a fact. He was very dirty that uh, Mitch, unfortunately, had to pull out on fight week. So, yeah, we've been another six or seven weeks now that, uh, that Percy's been waiting to get in there and fight for this belt. And I tell you what, there's one thing I love about fighters. It's been belt happy. When Mitch McLaren pulled out of his last fight, Percy wanted the belt. He basically said he trained. He was ready for the fight. He turned up. Give me the belt. I deserve the belt. And uh, unfortunately, the difficult conversation had to be that, no, unfortunately, mate, you're going to have to fight for it first. But here they are, backing up only six weeks, seven weeks after that fight should have happened. He's got a new opponent, but yeah, still prepared to throw it all on the line to grab that belt that he so desperately wants. And once again, both the gentlemen have um, the same ranking in terms of BJJ, but BJJ is a different animal when it comes to jumping in the cage. Grappling is not the same. So it's a different level of wrestling. You've got judo, you've got sambo. There's a whole range of different grappling techniques, even some within Muay Thai itself in terms of the Thai clinch. So while they have white belts in BJJ, that does not underestimate their ability to be able to grapple. And both these boys are going to be able to throw down. Percy's been working on his boxing and also his wrestling. So I want to see how this works here. He definitely had a super long a long uh, fight camp, and I know that he wants to finish with a head kick, which I would love to see. This next fight is an amateur flyweight fight, B class rules, and it's for the XFC Amateur Flyweight Championship. Introducing first in the blue corner, weighing in at 57.1 kilos, with an amateur record of two wins. One loss, fighting out of all ten. 
other on here. And we have Moses Killmonger Dang wearing the white trunks and Percival No Mercy Mamba wearing the black pants. We're in our round one of five three-minute rounds for the amateur. Yeah, doesn't Moses have a long, lanky frame for this flyweight division? He certainly does. Definitely has the reach advantage there. You can already see the skill level change in this fight with the feints and the checks and the look. I can just see what's happening. Nice little oblique, um, rear oh, oblique yeah. kick coming there from Moses. It comes up so quickly, oh, very, very similar to uh, Conor McGregor used to throw. Yeah, you can kind of feel the tension in the crowd as well. Everyone's sitting there waiting to see what happens next. So, yeah, Moses has a three centimeter height advantage, but he certainly is carrying that into the reach. Look at these feints. This is another level of MMA. Locking up Percy is able to be able to switch stance, so Percy wearing the black trunks. Nice leg kick there by Percy. And Moses sat down for a long range body punch as well. Wow, Ooh, he sends it. Almost. Being the very being snipers right now, they're picking what they want to do. Only one shot at a time. Anything you can do, I can do better. So they're throwing it back at each other. Percy switching stance. And as someone who does switch stance for himself, it gives your opponent different Oy, looks. Nice catch. Your strikes can come from a whole range, whole, range uh, whole different range. And it makes it very, very difficult for your opponent to be able to read. Oy. Yeah, Percy's done really well reading. Uh, oh, nice body kick. Reading Beautiful Moses' kicks. Lever. kicks. Every, so, time he, every time he kicks the uh, the body, normally, you know, Percy's able to step away and use his own hand to, to shoot the, the kick away. But again, when that one went to the head, he uh, perfectly stepped back. Yeah, it's a back and forth with his, head, uh, with his uh, leg kick. Hey, he got it! Beautiful. Moses set it up. Uh, and, and, and part of the setup for that head kick was that liver kick earlier. Yeah, high IQ in this fight. Good straight there by Moses. Nice. Both Got double through. underhooks. Good work. Turn the cage. Uh -oh. Yeah, 20 seconds to go on this first round of five. Almost had a bit of a hip toss. Yeah, if someone was able to sneak a little takedown in here, the, the round has been so close that you'd think it might even steal the round. Yeah, there was a knee up into the bread basket as well. Oni returns it. Oh, wow. That was a good round. Super technical striking here. And the boys are both a combination of being patient and also throwing at speed, so... Yeah, one thing I'd say that both corners have probably said is that it's a title fight, and title fights with XFC are five rounds. Do you know what I mean? It's only three rounds and three-minute rounds. You've got nine minutes to, to find a result. Here, they've got the extra two rounds, so... Pretty clever. Take their time with the first round. Yeah. And now we'll see what happens. We're expecting more the next round. I think they'll keep easing into it because end of the day you've got five rounds and this is where your championships really really come in play so I'm, I'm expecting more of the same but what they will have is a download of all their opponents faints timings and favorite sequences 
usually what you see in the amateurs is everyone kind of throws out their their favorite techniques in the first round it's not until you get to the pros that they start varying it up but both these are very um accomplished fighters and there's a reason there's a belt on the line here Ooh, the fans of that kick a bit more aggressive this round oh, nice Yeah, let's see if uh, Moses has the old, the old question mark kick in his tool bag. Because like I said, there's a couple of times he's gone to the body and purse. He's reached out with his hand to, uh, to brush it away. If uh, Moses was able to throw a question mark kick up there, he might be able to sneak it in there. Oh, yeah, he's, he's going to that well affair, but he is actually Oy. sequencing that front kick there almost to get the hands. Ooh. Went for the shot. Beautiful double underhooks. Percy's, Percy's just so quick to respond to everything. Ooh. Good pressure. Well, good reversal by Moses there on the cage. He's doing a great job. Um, so Percy almost got his leg behind the hips. And that, that gives you an opportunity to be able to suck the hips away from the cage and get complete the takedown. There he is again. But Moses is just being able to snake his leg out so easily. He's got the reversal there now. Good reversal. Oh, he's got it. Down he goes. Wow, good job. Bob. Good sense of urgency there by Moses. And now he's in the top position. Oh, nice. Oh. Nice and patient before nice he waited to through that knee. I like how he threw the knee to the thigh, followed by the right cross. So Percy might want to be trying to win this round back off him. Like you said before, takedown could make or break the round. Percy with a nice Ooh. exchange there. Nice defense on the hand being up there. So Moses is just looking to sniper any strikes. Hey, Percy sent it up. Oh, Moses. Hey, another big one. We got him vertical. Oh, oh, oh that's, horizontal. Wow. That punch had no regard for human life. Big swing there. Oh, he's starting to throw some with, with a bit of venom now, Percy. Take me down. <laughs> hey. wow, he spins himself around with the power in that shot. He's not going to die trying. Sorry, die wondering, I should say. He's going to throw everything at it. But he's also doing it in quite a good technical oh, way. Set it up again. Moses has a really good read on that high kick, followed by the right cross. He's just got the timing and sequence to be able to duck under. We'll have to see wow. if, uh, if Percy changes that up in the third round just to catch him out. Yeah, so you know, you, yeah I was going to say, I hate the cliched responses that commentators come up with. You know, the whole, I'd hate to be a, a judge right now. But it's, it's basically what's going through my head right now. Like, how do you score those first two rounds? I don't care. That's what the judges <laughs> get paid for. I love what I'm seeing right now. Absolute great quality striking. The boys are obviously going this dent with a huge range of techniques across the board. At this stage, I believe that Moses has a really, really good download read of what Percy's throwing. But Percy's got a home for that uh, a high head kick as well. All it takes is a little bit of a slip in terms of where Moses has his hand, and it's there all day. As you mentioned before, Matt, Moses is also lulling Percy into that front kick as well. That could easily become a question mark kick. What do you think the keys to success here are, Adam? Uh, well, it's quite hard to read, mate, but I think uh, the head kicks are a good guy, and uh, Moses here has a good takedown straight after that head kick. And you look at the fitness of the boys, they're not breathing out too hard. Both both gentlemen have their mouths closed. You know, so that shows just the Senate. quality of fitness in them. Still throwing feints, little hip movements. Yeah, the one thing I like about Percy is we know that he we know that he's chasing that that uh, left head kick. Ooh, knockout doubled finish. Up. He's only thrown it three times so far, so he's not getting silly with it. No, they've, they've been absolute snipers here. They're not wasting any shots. Yeah, he obviously knows that if he throws it far too many times, his opponent's going to get a read on it. Yeah. 
Completely agree. And this is the whole point around being patient and striking. So Percy's going for volume. Moses is just trying to get those efficiency hits in. In that being said, they're both throwing a lot of strikes. Absolutely. Hey. So once again, we've got Moses, the Killmonger, oh, is up. in the get. white. Hey, good chase. Oh, beautiful work chase by, by Percy. Percy. So Percy, no mercy in the black pants. Currently sitting in top in a kind of a pseudo half guard. Yeah, half guard. Yeah, let's see how long he wants to hold on to this for. Holding on to that neck can be exhausting. It's really hard to do with gloves on. It can be done. Let's see how he goes. He wants it, though. He does. At this stage, I, I can see the back of Percy's neck, so I don't think it's on tight enough. As oh, Percy jumps the, into... He's got the Kagastani leg lock held down. So he's locked in both positions, and at this stage, he's about to step up that. and be able to rain down the punches. Look at that head pressure that... Percy is putting on there against the cage. That is brutal. Yeah, and he listened to his coach, Renato Subotic, right there. He said he wanted head pressure on the other side, and like a robot, moved that head exactly Look. where his coach wanted it. Yeah, and head now... position on top, head position on the side. He's listing so well. And this is something for um, any fighters at home. The ability to be able to listen to your coach around being able to execute what they're seeing versus what you're feeling in your instinct. A good level of trust in your fighter between the coaches as well. Got a leg out. We could see we could start to see Mo just walk up the cage. It's gonna be really hard to do with that head pressure yep. because you can't really get your hips out in any kind of distance or structure. Now he can, but you might see Percy's looking to suck those hips out again and pull him pull yep. him out again. Yeah, ten seconds to go. Ten seconds to go. This is where I think you'll just start letting letting the uh, strikes go. There we go. Right on the buzzer. Oy, nice one. Man, yeah, a normal fight, that would be it. But ladies and gentlemen, we've got two more to go. And this is the difference of the championship rounds. These are why those XFC belts are so hard to come by. Both gentlemen are showing so much skill set right now. And it's not like you can tell that there's an obvious flaw in someone's game. These boys are well-rounded, and they're just mixing it up. You just can't pick it. Yeah, that was a great round from Percy there. He was able to get some success on the ground there, landed some shots. And Stephen Walton from Wolves Den, he'll be basically telling Moses, let's go back to some of the things we had in the first two rounds. I'm expecting to see Moses coming out a little bit more uh, free with his strikes. As we move into the championship rounds. Here we go. That's what they train for. Round four. Both boys in peak condition. Shredded. Moses quick to occupy the center of the round. Oh, Percy center cage. Big swing by Moses. Moses is doing well getting in, doing his damage, and moving his hips back again so he doesn't get struck. Yeah. Utilizing that height and reaching. Hey, that was a loud clap, that one. Yeah, I think if a stoppage is going to come, sir, it's going to come from a head kick from either fighter. Yeah. They do it so eloquently. It's like breathing. They're certainly getting the strikes up quickly, but I think there's, some, there's a fair bit of venom in those strikes as well. Big swing. On there. call. I like, I'm really liking in the fourth round, they're still throwing feints. Yeah, it's incredible. Hey, still IQ is high. I think Moses just got the read then for the, uh, for the question mark kick. He brought his uh, knee up center in the middle. He now, might be looking to unleash that shortly. I was going to say, oh, class of bodies there. In terms of the judging criteria, the, the 10 point must system may very well come into effect here. And what I mean by that is the judges, first of all, they're looking at striking and grappling first. 
if they can't pick between striking and grappling, that's when they move to the aggression and the octagon control. Mm. And so far, the aggression has been pretty, pretty fair, but the octagon control has actually been on Moses' side the whole time. He's commanded the middle of the cage. He's been pushing Percy back the whole time. So again, when we're looking at the judging criteria, we don't know really who's had the advantage in the striking. So it literally could come down to this cage control here. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking in the first and the third, Moses probably did more volume in terms of striking. But at this stage, I'm just loving what's, looking at what I'm seeing here. Both these gentlemen are throwing everything at each other. Completely well-rounded fighters. Nice that beautiful left hand come from the switch, switch stance. From the south pole, come right from the hip, straight up down the down the uh, down the pipe. Big, big, wow, good shot. Yeah, fast shot too, wasn't it? Just lightning speed. Oh, and just to be able to, yeah, I that, love, I really uh, love when people strike up, going off the cage. Yep. No wasted space, you know. Yeah, Percy just seems to throw that extra shot on every exchange, doesn't he? Every ex every escape. Nice oh, one there. Beautiful boy. outside trip and Quite then came off the cage That's to be able to make sure it fell over. And again, in such a close contested round with 10 seconds to go. He wrapped his leg halfway through the cage and by the time he got to the end, it was down. Yeah, he actually Incredible. used the bounce off the cage to twist and put him on the ground. So his leg was no longer there, but uh, great, great reasonship and understanding on where you are in your body. Fifth and final coming up. So, Matt, what do you reckon the keys to success are that uh, Renato is giving Percy? I think he knows that if he can get him to the ground, he can keep him there. You know, yeah. so, and again, he's got that head kick. We know he wants it badly. So, again, with uh, with only one round to go is now the time that he, he pulls it out. I think, I think Moses, too, uh, the only weakness he seems to have is when, when, um, when Percy takes him down. So, I think he just really needs to be aware. The striking is pretty close. This fifth round is really, really going to see them bring out all their cards. It's really going to be impressive, I think. Something you will notice in the fourth round is that it was generally Moses who actually initiated the grappling um, skill sets up until that last takedown by Percy as well. So yeah. this, is, this is the fifth round. This is the championship round. One of these gentlemen will be walking out of this cage with the XFC amateur flyweight belt around their waist. And speaking about that championship, I'm looking across the cage here and I can see Paul Birch and Mitch McLaren watching this fight very, very closely. Obviously, Mitch was supposed to be uh, Percy's original opponent, but unfortunately injured. And his eyes are glued on this fight. Oh, oh. good head movement there. Yeah, big aggression Percy. early from, from Moses. Maybe the uh, direction from his coach. Hey. Oh. Maybe the direction from both guys is we don't know how this fight's been judged, so maybe look for a, uh, a finish to assure the win. Yeah, Percy was throwing uh, punches in bunches and then also went for his high kick again. Moses is really locking down that centre of that cage. Oh, nice. That was a long takedown entry. There he goes. Wow. Nice and once, he's, once his hands were clasped, was going for right. He is butterflying those, feet, those legs up, which makes it really hard to get out because you have to clear one of those legs from that lock before you can even look to you getting up. He's got the Dagestani hand shake, all, handcuff almost. So Percy's uh, left arm is right right by the hips of uh, Moses. And Moses is uh, trying to make sure he doesn't post off his elbow and get caught with that and defend at the same time. And now the situation we're in is that for the third round in a row, Moses is, sorry, Percy's been able to get this fight to the ground. Yep. That's what I was saying before. It seems to be the only thing that uh, Moses has been struggling with. Moses is now flat on his back as well, with his legs locked up and his head not quite in the gutter, but it's not helping him. Yeah, it's, it probably I think it's the second time we've seen Percy able to lock those legs up, but this is the first time we've seen him where he's above the knees. Because yeah. that's really going to cause some issues. There's a bit of a trap set up here in terms of Percy still has the other hand there, and can certainly go back to that Dagestani hand, handcuff any time, but he's looking to rain down the punches instead. Good control here by, by Percy. By being above the knees like that, it's super hard now to move your hips. Not only to mention he's also against the cage, so it makes it even harder to move. So getting up from this position, it's a nightmare. 
Yeah, Percy's breaking that um, overhook on the left-hand side as well, just trying to create some distance to rain down those punches from a bit more more height, just causing more impact and uh, in, um, volume for him. So Renato is just screaming out his instructions, and Percy's listening in, in kind. Ten seconds. The last ten seconds for one of these fighters to be crowned the amateur XFC lightweight champion. Wow, good fight, boys. Phenomenal. Oh, fuck. Now, that would have to be the most technical fight we've had on the card tonight, I think. And it's just our first of, of three championship fights for tonight. So now we have it going to the judges. Our second fight of the night to go for the decision. As we watch the replay, this is round five. Percy just dominating that top position. And how much of that sits back in the memory of the judges? He took a big chance with a big shot and paid off well. What an absolute super technical striking match there with some really high quality grappling as well. Yeah, for sure. Hey, good, good respect here at the end too, you know, these boys just went through a five round war and to be able to shake your hand and have respect for your opponent, win or lose is an amazing thing. was injured and we know how desperate you were to leave that night with the belt you finally got it mate how does it feel it feels great this i didn't really i don't really care about the belt to be honest i wanted to go five rounds he's a good guy the guy that i fought all respect to him for stepping in the cage with me because everybody was pulling out everybody was calling in sick i showed up to work you know i'm here to prove i'm the best i don't care i don't care about this belt i wanted to go five rounds and show him he had no chance to beat me. Good respect to, my, to the guy, but I wanted to go five rounds, not for because of the belt, but because I wanted to show him, you can't go five rounds with me. I'll win every single round. Mate, uh, in terms of that fight you were supposed to have on the last show, uh, Mitch McLaren is here tonight. I can see he was uh, eagerly watching the fight. Is that a fight you still want? Who? Who? 
I don't know anybody called, I don't even know his name. It's not about him, it's about me tonight. I'm the champ, I'm the flyweight champ, you know. I believe, I believe flyweight is the best division. And I'm gonna prove that. But all these flyweights, come on flyweights, let's make this happen. If you wanna fight, if you wanna make the division great again, come get some of these, come on. Mate, um, in terms of the actual fight, Every time he threw a kick, you read it. Every time he threw a punch, you read it. Were you in the matrix tonight, or did you literally just study everything about your opponent, or you were just completely in the zone? What was going on tonight? Every time, every time I get a fight, every time my coach gives me a name, yo, I'm all up on you. I will stalk you, I will go to your house, I don't care, man. I study all my opponents, I'm the best for a reason. I don't just get fights and say, yeah, I can beat him. No, I study you. I write your name down, I write what's good about you, I write what's wrong about you, and then we come in here, and then I show you I'm the best, man. Come on. You did, mate, you absolutely proved that. Mate, last question, who would you like to thank? Everyone that helped me. My boxing coach, I finally got to show a little bit of my boxing. Thank you, Skinny Usain, for working on my boxing. Thank you all my grappling coaches, and let's not forget the best coach in Australia. My MMA coach, Coach Renato, man, I love you, bro. Let's go to the top together, baby. Come on. All right, congratulations, everyone. And again, your new champion, Flyweight Percy.